In this video, we're going to put our size hat on and we're going to go through one of the most infamous DMSO recipes to treat Peyronie's and maximize our PE gains. We're going to go through the ingredients, how to mix it together, how to apply it, our routine, how to combine it with other exercises such as traction and BED. Why did we choose some of the specific elements for this recipe, how they're supposed to work together, and let's actually utilize science and chemical PE to maximize our gains. It's going to be a very interesting video, so let's get started. Okay, so first let's do a little bit of an introduction into this infamous recipe. And I actually put together a little presentation, which is not something that I usually do, but I feel like this is so important that I actually wanted to put a few slides together. So let's go through those. Okay, so let's, here we go. So first of all, this is called DMSO plus X. So essentially we're going to be using DMSO and combining it with different elements. So that would be the X. And this is specifically for the treatment of Peyronie's or scar tissue and for the usage of PE. Specifically, we're going to go through this recipe that combines DMSO, PABA, also known, also known as POTABA, and petoxyphylline. So first of all, a little bit about the history of this recipe. So it's very popular for Peyronie's. It has been around for a long, long time. I believe this came out in the 90s. It is based originally on uh, this doctor called Dr. Thacker, or Thacker, depending on where you see it. Uh, it's called Thacker's Formula. And so Thacker's Formula basically uh, combined DMSO, castor oil, and apple cider, apple cider vinegar in a 70, 20, 10% mix. However, we're going to be modifying the recipe. And this recipe was actually modified originally by a username called Melting. So I want to give a lot of credit to Melting, who actually inspired me a lot and helped me a lot to get through this recovery of Peyronie's. And there was also a lot of contributors. This was originally in the Peyronie Society Forum. So if you have Peyronie's, you should go ahead and uh, join that forum. I'm, I'm qu quite active in it. But there's also a lot of people that are very knowledgeable that are very active in this in this forum. Personally, I used it for about a year. After that, I was quite content with both my gains and my Peyronie's, where it's just like it, the 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 curvature is so minimal, where it just doesn't even bother me anymore, and I maximize my gains. And it wasn't even recently until I started this channel where I decided to go to take it even further. So I've I've been using this formula again for the past few weeks just to make sure that I'm well prepared for this video and make sure that this information is fresh in my mind. This formula is quite safe. As I mentioned, I've been using it myself cuz I don't want to talk to you about I don't want to talk to you guys about something that I have never done myself. I got really good results from it. Keep in mind though this was in combination with other therapies, primarily with traction and a vacuum erection device. So what is our goal with this DMSO plus X recipe? So essentially, we want to do a few things. We want to break down scars and fibrotic tissue, and we want to break down calcified tissue. So it should be helpful in all stages of Peyronie's. Additionally, we want to promote collagen elasticity. So this should also be helpful, not just with people that have scarring, fibro fibrosis, or calcification, but also people that have just regular collagen and they want to maximize their gains. We want to use these ingredients to reach poor, poorly vascularized tissue, which is one of the problems why a lot of the oral treatments for Peyronie's does not work. Is because either those ingredients or the, that medication has a very short half-life, so it doesn't really live long enough to reach the plaque. So uh, keep an eye out for another video. I'm going to have another video on the oral treatment of Peyronie's. I already have another video on petoxifying itself. Make sure you check it out. But, addition, but basically, a lot of these treatments are quite effective in vitro. Basically, that means that in a Petri dish, when you combine scar tissue or a Peyronie's plaque with these elements, these elements actually break down those fibrotic tissue and heal the collagen. But however, in vivo, it, they're not as effective. And this is because a lot of the parts of the tunica, they just don't have that much blood flow to it. They basically just get some of their blood flow, kind of like bones, basically where the blood flow just kind of, uh, they get some of the nutrients and blood, not directly from blood, but sort of uh, an indirect process. Additionally, you want to choose ingredients based on whether you have an active, the active phase of Peyronie's or the chronic phase. This particular recipe that I'm going to be focusing on today can be used for either both the active and the chronic, and I'll go through that. I'll, I'll go through why in a little bit. Okay, so first, okay, so next, we're gonna go through a few notes. So essentially, the compounds, the elements, the ingredients for the recipe should have a low molecular weight. Additionally, the, re the elements, the ingredients 
should be fat or water soluble. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go through the recipe. So in this recipe, as I mentioned, we're gonna focus on my bread and butter, the one that I use just about every day that I use for a long time. And the ingredients are DMSO, castor oil, apple cider vinegar, potava, and betoxifylin. Next, we're gonna go through some of the ingredients and why we chose them. And we're gonna go through a little bit of uh, information about them. So first is DMSO, which has a very low molecular weight. I actually have a dedicated video on DMSO. Make sure you check that out. So I'm not gonna dive too much into DMSO. Just keep in mind that we're using DMSO both to promote collagen elasticity, but specifically we're using it to transport the other ingredients into the tunica, which is beneath the skin. So some of the main ingredients, as I mentioned, are apple cider vinegar, which has a very low molecular weight, which is a weak acid. And I'll go a little bit more into apple cider vinegar. I'll, I'll be referring to it as ACV in the future. Uh, it's a weak acid. And so when you combine DMSO with a weak acid, acid, it actually promotes collagen elasticity. And make sure you, you watch that other DMSO video uh, to find out why. Uh, we're gonna be using castor oil, which has a very high molecular weight, but we're really not gonna be using castor oil um, because we wanna reach the plaque. It's mainly to, uh, to act, act as a skin protector, to protect the skin, because DMSO can be quite harsh on the skin. The two main ingredients, the two main elements that we're gonna use be besides ACV are called PABA or POTABA, which has a very low molecular weight. It's water soluble. And it's one of those, one of the things that have been used to treat Peyronie's. I'm going to have a dedicated video on Potaba, but also touch a little bit more, um, a little bit further into the video onto uh, what Potaba is. Then we're going to use pentoxifylene. So this is optional. So if you have Peyronie's, most likely you can have access to this pentoxifylene medication. If you don't, if you're just using this for PE, it's completely optional. The other ingredients are quite effective on their own, but Potaba, uh, I'm sorry, but pentoxifylene, has actually been shown to break down for body tissue, to break down calcification in vitro. And we're gonna be using it for this recipe. And it has a very low uh, molecular weight, below, well below that 500 that we talked about earlier. It's also water soluble. Additionally, we're gonna be using a few emulsifiers. So emulsifiers, basically, if you only use the MSO, ACV, and castor oil, the recipe is too runny to really use it, uh, to apply it effectively. And so we're gonna use emulsifiers to make it a little bit more gelatinous, make it easier to apply and make it easier to stay on the penis. So these are the two emulsifiers that we're gonna be using. One is called lecithin and the other one's called uh, xanthin. So next, I wanna give a little bit of, of an overview. If you haven't seen the other videos, um, specifically on the ingredients, I'm just gonna go a, a quick overview into each of the main ingredients. So first, the MSO, it has anti-inflammatory properties, antifibrotic properties. It loosens up connective tissue. It's a vasodilator. It actually breaks down calcium. It's a strong antioxidant. It's a muscle relaxer. It can actually help remodel scars, helps the body release collagenase, which basically helps down, helps break down collagen. But the really the main thing is that it transports low molecular weight substances under the skin and it promotes collagen elasticity again i have a whole video on dmso alone however dmso by itself is quite harsh on the on the skin and we always need to dilute it and there's a, like if you watch a dmso video there's quite a few things that we can use to dilute it what i call mixers in this case we're going to be using apple cider vinegar as a mixer and primarily we're going to use it uh, to dilute the dmso but apple cider vinegar also kills bacteria kills fungus it acts as a weak acid, which helps DMSO in the breakdown of collagen. It flattens and reduces scars. It's actually used for uh, by people topically to help reduce scars. It's another anti-inflammatory and kind of also removes warts. So if you have warts on your dick, you know I think it'll help. It'll uh, help um, take those warts off. Next, the other key ingredient is called PABA, also known as POTABA, and this is actually one of the old school oral treatments for Peyronie's. Essentially what it does is it makes the skin more flexible. It softens the Peyronie's plaques. It also acts, it also acts as an anti-inflammatory, anti-fibrotic. It decreases fibrosis and it stabilizes scars. And there's, um, you know, keep an eye out for that uh, Potava video that I'll have just on Potava alone. So I won't dive too much into it. And then here's the other one. So this is pentoxifylene. So I do have a video on pentoxifylene. Uh, check that out. So essentially pentoxifylene uh, helps in the treatment of Peyronie's. Again, it's an anti-inflammatory, anti-fibrotic. The main thing is, is a TGF beta inhibitor, which if you watch that pentoxifylene video, is the main contributor for the creation of a um, Peyronie's plaque. 
So this is very, very, this whole recipe is extremely useful for the active states, active state of Peyronie's. Additionally, it reduces calcification. It's a collagen inhibitor. It's a vasodilator, excuse the typo there. It dilates the small arteries and reduces blood viscosity. So basically it's a vasodilator, not in a sense that it opens um, the arteries that much, but really it makes the blood a little bit thinner such that um, more blood reaches those small arteries and the penis is basically made up of a lot of small arteries. Okay, uh, so here's some of the tools that you're going to need uh, to put together this, uh, this recipe. And I'm going to link all of these below. So you're going to need two glass containers, a glass dropper, a pill crusher, and a mixing stick. Okay, so here's the actual instructions how to mix it. I'm not going to go through uh, to them. I'm actually going to show you how to mix it together. But this presentation is going to be available in the description below so that you can refer to it without actually having to refer to the video. All right, here we go. So, um, so this is my kind of my mixing table, my lab, if you will. So it's, you know, sorry, I don't have a better angle, but this is the best I can do right now. So just kind of bear with me. Uh, so first I'm just going to go through the, uh, uh, list of ingredients. So first here we go with DMSO. So we have that, uh, next we have, we're going to have a mixer Our mixer is going to be apple cider vinegar this one right here says unpasteurized uh raw unfiltered this is what you want to use this one's pretty good and then another mixer that we're going to mix it with is castor oil here this one's really good for a lot of different things so and i have separate videos if they're not up already uh they should be soon um where i go over each of these ingredients uh you know uh, by themselves kind of some other uh pharmaceutical or like chemical properties so yeah so we have castor oil and then um our main compound that we're going to be basically compounding with is paba this right here this is really cheap uh you can get it in bulk they're on amazon i bought this i think on amazon but uh, you can get it in a lot of places uh next um so because uh if you just mix these things they're kind of be kind of runny so you can use uh, an emulsifier so here i have uh i don't even know how to pronounce it, xanthan gum this helps kind of make the substance a little bit more uh kind of gel like so it doesn't it's not as runny it sticks it sticks a little bit better and then i can also use uh this uh sunflower lecithin which is also another emulsifier i just kind of mix them together and um that's it those are all the ingredients um i'm also going to i don't actually the problem here is that i don't have pentoxifylene um you know i don't use that anymore i should probably renew my prescription um i use it a lot back in the day but uh yeah so you know i highly recommend that you can use pent uh, add pentoxifylene um but um you know unfortunately i don't have it for this video but it's something that i highly recommend and you don't it's not something that's necessary it's optional uh so now we have um sort of our tools uh so we have here two glass droppers uh one i use for like the liquidy stuff the other one i use for the castor oil oil because uh the castor oil can get a little bit clogged up uh so that's why i have two here uh, i have a little measuring cup this is two uh two millimeters or half a tablespoon uh, and next to mix things up, I have this little bamboo little skewer that I have. Just make sure you use all natural things. This is bamboo, so uh, it's not going to absorb anything. This is what I'm going to mix it with. I have a pill crusher here that I would use if I had uh, the pentoxifylene. Basically, you drop three, uh, three capsules in here and use this to get the powder out. Uh, and then I'm going to have two of these jars. So these are like glass jars with sort of like this wooden kind of uh top so that way it doesn't like um you know i used to use like the, the metal ones but they uh, i saw that they would get like a little rusty which i didn't like now these are pretty good i like these a lot and i have two and i basically i use one to mix uh we, well, you'll see right now in the steps um why i have two then i have like uh, some of this masking tape and a sharpie just so that i can label the the mixtures uh, so i don't i don't get confused uh, I also have like a little cleaner so after the fact I can kind of clean the um, the the droppers so it's pretty useful and uh, yeah that's pretty much it for all the all the sort of ingredients and all the tools that you're gonna need okay next let's go through the the mixing process so let me clear some of this stuff out here all right so here we start with one uh, one jar here and so here we're gonna add um, we're gonna use one of the droppers to draw out 50 milliliters of DMSO. So notice this one is uh, goes up to 20. So I have to use it a couple times. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice I don't wear gloves. Like don't wear gloves. It's actually more dangerous to wear gloves. Make sure you clean your hands thoroughly uh, before you start. Uh, but you shouldn't be touching any of this stuff with your hands directly anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and draw 
gonna go ahead and draw our first 20. I'm gonna go ahead and draw first 20 milliliters here of the MSO. Put it here, put it in this jar. It's 20. Here we go, another add another 20 here. So that's now that's 40. And then we're gonna fill it about uh, we're gonna fill it halfway for a total of 50. So here we can fill the halfway, and here we go. So now we have 50 uh, milliliters of DMSO here. Gonna go ahead and close it out. That's all I need of the DMSO. Okay, next you're gonna draw. Okay, next you're gonna draw uh, 2.5 millimeters of the apple cider vinegar. Okay, here. So you're gonna draw, yeah, 2.5 millimeters. Drop it in the first jar. Notice here. And that's basically going to start, um, like this is gonna get a little bit warm here. So you're just gonna have to um, just let it sit for now. Okay, next you're gonna take out the other jar and you're gonna draw 12, 12.5 millimeters of apple cider vinegar. Okay, you're gonna drop it in jar number two here. Okay, uh, now you're gonna uh, take some of this paba here. Well, let me close out the apple cider vinegar so I don't spill anything. Okay, so now you're gonna take the paba. Go ahead and open that up. I'm gonna move this out of the way for now. Just spill anything here. And you're essentially going to draw uh, about three of these. Uh, I just like to do like big scoopfuls like this. Do like one, two, and then three. And there you go. <clears throat> okay, and next, um, now that you have it here, I'm gonna take my little bamboo stick here and I'm just going to mix it, okay? I may have added a little bit too much paba, but that's okay. Later it's going to really, really dissolve. Next, you're gonna um, add the pentoxifylene. Now, I'm gonna do a bit of an experiment. I don't have pentoxifylene, but I wanna do a bit of an experiment right now. Now, don't do this, like, don't do what I'm doing right now. Um, kinda just wanna, you know, wanna show you. But I basically have some Cialis here. These are five milligram little, uh, little pills here. So just kinda pretend this is pentoxifylene. <clears throat> gonna go ahead and throw this in there. And then I'm gonna use this and basically crush it. You just basically kind of crush it. Just go back and forth, mix it a little bit. <clears throat> Do it again. Unscrew it. Once you unscrew it, you're basically going to kind of tap it a little bit. And uh, yeah, here you go. You see the crushed up uh, Cialis. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this into jar number two. Then that's it. I can put this away. Okay, next kind of comes like the most annoying part. You're gonna draw out 10 milliliters of the castor oil so gonna go ahead and open this i'm gonna use the second uh the second uh here drawer here <clears throat> and uh this kind of sucks it's a little annoying uh, but yeah basically you're gonna have to draw out 10 millimeters it's gonna take a little while honestly because like it's kind of very uh thick viscous so it's gonna take a little while so okay so here i drew out i drew out i want it a bit over so i'm gonna put some back so i only want 10 milliliters yeah, and it takes a little while here like you can't really see it but uh there you go that's a little like a tiny bit over 10 millimeters gonna drop remove a little bit just to make sure i'm on the money i'm on the dot there you go and so that's about 10 milliliters go ahead and drop this into jar number two okay you can see there how it looks that's it for the castor oil for now <clears throat> go ahead and close that out get out of the way next i'm gonna add some of this uh liquid uh lecithin just an emulsifier just to give it a little bit more uh like stickiness to it so it doesn't just run all over the, all over the place it's kind of annoying like it's kind of sticky seeps out of the bottle so uh, that's why i keep it in a ziploc bag so i am gonna add like a, a little bit um you can kind of see there how much i'm adding say that's like a whole tablespoon or so and then close that out okay <clears throat> okay so here we have all the ingredients here so we're gonna mix them because i added uh that castor oil and the lecithin the papa is like dissolving a little bit more. It's it turning, um, it's a little bit easier now to mix. Okay, look, at, look how it looks like. Look at the consistency. I'm just gonna mix that really good. Basically, just try to mix it as, as, as much as you can. Yeah, just mix, mix, mix. Mix, mix, mix. There you go. This is what it looks like. Pretty well mixed together. Okay, so now you're gonna, um, you're gonna take here the mixture of apple cider vinegar and DMSO, and you're gonna place it into jar number two okay and uh you're gonna mix some more I'm gonna mix 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 so at this point it's a lot more uh it's still a little bit runny but i'm just gonna keep mixing again mix 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 it's nice and runny you know i just uh at this point you could probably try this out i know it's a little bit too runny for my own taste so what i'm going to do at this point is essentially add uh more paba and then I'm going to add some of this uh, xanthan gum here. 
So first let's add a little bit more Paba. So another big scoopful. Let's add two big scoopfuls. That's a really big scoopful there. Okay, put that away. And then I'm gonna add some xanthan gum just to make it a little bit stickier. So I'm gonna add I'm gonna add a scoopful about like this in there, and that should do it. That's what it looks like. And then uh, mix again. And mix, mix, mix. I'm gonna keep mixing. I can still see that it's still a little bit um, runny. It's still runny, you see. And I don't want it too runny because that's kind of annoying. So I'm add um, I'm add another of the xanthan gun gum. Another scoop. I'm gonna add some more paba. Another two big scoopfuls here. Okay, so two more big scoopfuls of the uh, paba. And uh, mix some more. Okay, so still fairly runny. So we're gonna add a little bit more of the uh, lecithin. Okay, so we're just gonna add some more of this lecithin. A good amount, because I want it nice and sticky. There you go. Okay, this should do it. Mix, mix, mix. Okay, I'm gonna keep mixing. It's not as um, as runny. There you go. And basically, you're just gonna keep adding either the gum or the lecithin uh, to make it nice and sticky. You might need to experiment a little bit. I know kind of like the the viscosity that I like. I, I I like I said. I keep saying I just don't like it sticky. So okay, I think I think we're good now. I mean, I like it sticky. I don't like it too runny. But then that's annoying. <sighs> kind of you know gets all over the place. So then you're gonna basically just kind of mix some more, mix, 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 mix. You can sort of see, show the camera here, you know what it looks like. So yeah, just make sure you mix it as well as you can. Just kind of keep adding paba, lecithin, and xanthan, uh, just to get it to a good viscosity here. Those those things are pretty benign, so there's no there's no real dangers. Okay, so it's finally at a place where I like it. Okay, you can sort of see it's not too runny. It's a little bit sticky. And you're gonna just keep mixing it. And then that's it. That's it for the, this is what it looks like. So I'm just going to kind of clean up the edges here. Clean up the edges. Okay. Okay, that's it. So now just close it up. So you're happy how, how well it's mixed. Make sure you mix it well, thoroughly. Close it. Boom. Good to go. You can sort of see here. This is it. So you're going to basically let this sit uh, overnight. So that way everything kind of settles. So you can see. Uh, the final product so just let us we'll let this sit overnight and we're good to go okay so here i have left it overnight uh put a little label on it and overnight the thing settled and basically it starts to solidify even more due to the emulsifiers that we put in so let's take a look what it looks like as you can see it's not runny anymore i can turn it it won't really fall down <clears throat> so it's very much like a cream now a sticky kind of gelatinous cream so what you're going to want to do now is do a spot test. I clean my hands. Make sure you clean your hands. So I'm going to take a little bit of this and then put it in a sensitive part of my area. I'll do it here in the forearm. Somewhere that I know is kind of sensitive. I'm going to put some there. There you go. A little bit fell. I'm going to have to clean that up. But yeah, just put that on. Leave it on for like an hour or so. See if you have any adverse reaction. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. This is the cream. This is what the final looks like. Keep in mind that it's, this is not like... This is my own personal recipe that I've been using for a long time and I'm still tweaking it a little bit. So one of the things that I want to experiment is using a little bit more potaba, keeping it a little bit more uh, more fluid, not making it as gelatinous. Well, the more gelatinous it is, the, the easier it is to apply. But I have a feeling that if it's less gelatinous, that it may actually be better uh, just to penetrate the skin. So just keep that in mind. And please, please let me know if you try this out. Let me know. Uh, go ahead and experiment with adding either more, uh, less potaba, make it a little bit runnier and see if you have any uh, any sort of um, different results. But what I outlined works pretty well. So here's uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, that recipe that I showed you. I've been using this for the past uh, the past couple of weeks and I noticed it's almost done. Now, the end result was actually a little bit too gelatinous, was a little bit too, uh, too solid. So if it is too solid, if you added a little bit too much potaba or too much of the emulsifiers, all you got to do is just add a little bit more apple cider vinegar to get just that, that nice. You want to make it seem like, like you make it, you want to make it uh, like a lotion that's easier to apply. That's not too thick, not too thin. Okay. So basically if it's too, if it's too gelatinous, just add a little bit more apple cider vinegar. And that's, this is what you will end up with. Next, I want to talk about uh, how do you apply it? So first make sure you clean your hands. What I like to do is I like to wear tight cotton white underwear. So basically I like to wear, um, this cotton, uh, white, make sure there's no dye on it. Uh, boxer briefs. So they're like boxers, but they're still tight. 
What I like to do is I like to use a paper towel. So just a clean white paper towel. I usually cut like about about like three sheets, three sheets of the paper towels, and I uh, fold it in half like so. So basically, I'm gonna fold it in half, and I I basically put this between the penis and the the testicles, and then I I scoop out handfuls with my fingers of the DMSO uh, mixture, and I just apply it all over the penis. Now I'm I'm uncut, I'm not circumcised, so I just put it all over the place. If you're circumcised, you probably want to avoid the glands. Because the glands are a little bit more sensitive and the tunica really doesn't go into only goes about halfway into the glands and most likely um you know your traction or your peronis plaque uh it's not going to go into the glands so just you know try to avoid the glands as much as possible i like to leave it on for at least 60 minutes now the forums say like 15 minutes is fine honestly like i actually like sleep with it so my personal uh, routine is i'll go to sleep and when i go to sleep i do this i put the I put on my underwear, I put the paper towel, I apply it, and I go to sleep. You know, if I wake up kind of early, I'll apply it again. I'll, you know, I'll keep reapplying it. Then in the morning, I'll take a shower uh, to, to basically uh, clean it off. Basically, leave it on for at least 60 minutes, reapply as needed. Uh, you'll see it kind of like um, dissipate, so just reapply as needed. Uh, take a shower to clean it off. And in the shower, I like to do just very light joking. Now, you know, I'm not a big fan of joking. It's very advanced. It's optional. I'm very advanced. So, like, just if, you, if you're not advanced, don't don't worry about the joking. This, this is fine. I just like to do a little bit of joking in the shower uh, to clean it off. You know, and I basically I'm in the shower for about 20, 30 minutes or so. Um, also, make sure you have a hair catcher in your, uh, in your tub because this can actually clog your pipes. It actually clogged my pipes. I had to fucking clean it with a snake uh, because I didn't have a hair catcher at first. Here I have a hair catcher because this thing could actually clog up your pipes. So make sure you clean it. It can be a little bit messy. If you get the right uh, the right mixture, right gelatinous, it's actually not that messy, especially with a paper towel. Um, but basically that's how you put it on. Just, you know, just apply it like you would like any sort of uh, lotion on your penis. Okay, next I want to talk about a few of the warnings. Okay, number one. Please, 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 if you're a hypochondriac, if you're an anxious person, if you're someone that just freaks out easily, just don't even try it. Don't even do it. I don't want to fucking deal with people that are like, that get freaked out. This is perfectly safe. I've been doing it for a long time, but I also don't get freaked out. Like I mentioned before, I've actually like burned myself while I was, you know, coming up with the recipe because DM I, I had uh, mixtures that were too high in DMSO, burned my dick a lot. Had to put a lot of air, aloe vera on it, but I'm not the type of person that um, gets freaked out easily by things like that. So if you are one of those persons, don't even bother, you know, click out of this, just do regular traction, don't even bother, you know. Um, so if you're a hypochondriac or anxious, just don't, don't, don't do it. Um, based on some studies, DMSO is actually quite good, actually helpful for the testicles and sperm. But if you're one of those persons that you want to have kids and are worried about that, um, again, you know, I'm I already like, I'm not worried about that. Um, so you may want to stay away from that. I just don't want you to like have that in the back of your mind. Like, oh, if you're, you know, like, oh, I want to have kids and like I did DMSO and all this stuff. Like if you're worried about that, just again, don't even bother. Don't, don't do this. But keep in mind that DMSO was used uh, for the preservation of, of eggs and in vitro fertilization. There are a few studies that say that it may potentially affect the embryos when it was used for that, but there was like nothing, no, no major effects. But again, if you're worried about that, like don't, don't bother about it. If you're not, then, you know, I think it's, per it's perfectly fine. If you have super sensitive skin, um, uh, you know, you, you make sure you do a spot test, always do a spot test. I always do that. Uh, it can be a little bit messy. I'm, I'm a clean freak. So er any, any sort of messiness that falls on the floor or whatever, I just clean it up. It's going to get your underwear dirty. It's going to get your pajamas dirty. Uh, but I just, you know, just do laundry. Just keep in mind that it can be a little bit messy. Additionally, be very careful if you're mixing compounds. So in this recipe, uh, it should be safe. You're not mixing like different compounds. Um, so for example, if you're missing, uh, mixing like vitamin C plus magnesium, uh, which I'll talk about more a little bit further on, you can create a different com compound and, uh, this may not have the effects that you want to do. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about additional ingredients that you can add. Um, I do not recommend that you just add more ingredients. What I recommend is you create different mixtures. 
and sort of cycle through those mixtures uh, if you want to add like different elements. One more thing that I wanted to mention uh, for the precautions, just in case that you're super sensitive and this actually irritates your penis, it ends up, uh, you know, burning it. Like the, uh, honestly, if you follow the recipe, just like the way that I outlined it, it's almost too safe. You may want to like um, add more DMSO and make it like a little bit more effective, but somewhat less safe. But if you do uh, do that and it's, uh, it irritates your skin, it's okay. Just wash it off, put a bunch of aloe vera on it and uh, it'll heal up like in a few days. You know, no, no, nothing too bad. This has happened to me before, as I mentioned. Um, if your skin basically like dries up, uh, you know, let's say that after your traction or during your traction, um, you can just add castor oil, just put a bunch of castor oil on your dick and it's going to basically, uh, oil, lather up your penis. It's going to basically, uh, you know, heal up that dry skin. Um, the, the, the way that I put the recipe, like it doesn't dry up my skin at all. I don't need to put castor oil, but just in case. Also, I want to touch on like some of the things that I want to do next. Uh, that I think are going to be even more effective. And if you figure out how to do this, please, please, please let me know. But number one is I want to be able to figure out how I can apply this DMSO while I'm doing traction. Now, the reason that I don't do that is because DMSO can actually uh, dissolve some of the plastic. Let's say you have, you're wearing like a sleeve in the vacuum chamber or a clamp or whatever. It can actually dissolve some of the plastic and it can be quite dangerous because that's going to put a uh, is going to put that plastic into your bloodstream and you don't want to do that. Make sure you clean up before you do any traction. But I do want to figure out how I can use this while I'm doing traction because I want to make sure that the DM, like the recipe, uh, you know, reaches into the plaque as much as possible. And basically my theory and like the theory of a lot of the people, including melting and so on, is that if you stretch it out first and then you put the recipe on, it's going to be even more effective. This is something I'm going to be playing about, uh, playing with. And also, I'm, I'm trying to get a vacuum erection device, a cylinder that's made of pure glass. Uh, and so if with pure glass, basically what I want to use, what I want to do is put on the DMSO uh, and then do traction because I think this is going to basically, uh, again, you know, break up the, the scar tissue as much as possible and allow the DMSO to penetrate deeper into the plaque, into the DMSO, uh, in, into the fibrotic tissue, into the collagen, and really make it even more effective. So these are some of the next level things that I want to play around with. And if you're um, adventurous enough, smart enough to like figure out how to do that, please, please let me know. I already found, uh, thanks to one of the Reddit users, I don't know their name off the top of my head. They actually pointed me to one of the glass cylinder. Uh, I already ordered it, so I'm going to start using it when I get it. And I'll make a follow-up video on how to, you can use this recipe with the uh, vacuum erection device at the same time. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so what you saw was the bread and butter. This is the, the that's the recipe that I use every day that I use for a long time. I mean, when I, when I apply it, my penis is stretchy as fuck. Like, especially when I do, um, when I do traction afterwards, like I can, I can literally see the effects of my stretchy penis. Um, what you should do is basically, um, do traction. You should also, you can also combine it with, a uh, with heat. And that's really, really going to maximize your gains. So when I basically do the, uh, I put it off overnight, um, then I do traction the next day. Now, you know me, I do traction for like six hours because I work from home. You don't have to do that. I'm going to have a different uh, video on um, the perfect, like, you know, the newbie routine 2.0. Uh, but basically, if you if you apply a if you use the technique of adding dynamic tension, basically adding more tension while you have a traction device on, you only have to do it for like 60 to 90 minutes. This is based on the Restorix uh, study. But yeah, you can combine it with traction and and a heat to to really like maximize your gains. Now, I want to talk about what other recipes you could potentially use, and I'm only gonna briefly touch on this because because uh, I want to only want to focus on the bread and butter. Uh, which I already did, but I want to talk about a little bit like what, what's in the horizon. And so if you guys are interested, if there's a lot of interest on in this, I'm going to have dedicated on videos on this. Um, I think this is going to be enough for, you know, for, to get started for the vast majority of people, but here's are some of the other recipes that you can, uh, you can use. So another recipe that I used a lot was vitamin C. Basically, instead of the PABA uh, and the pentoxifylline, you can use uh, ascorbic acid, vitamin C, has a very low molecular weight. It's an antioxidant, wound healing, some of the other things like vitamin E. Uh, bromelain, <coughs> which is uh, you know has been shown to inhibit scar formation. However, it has a very high molecular weight. Um, magnesium, iodine, aloe vera, boron, and some other things that you can actually uh, throw in there, right? There's actually a patent 
for something called papain, which I believe is is uh, derived from pineapples. And there's actually a patent uh, in which they combine DMSO and papain to break down calcium. Quite interesting. Zinc, selenium. There's like uh, the possibilities are endless. So please, 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 if you're smart and you know like what other things we could possibly combine, all you have to do is put in the molecular weight, uh, figure out whether it's fat or water soluble, <laughs> figure out if it's safe, first of all, and then you can actually add it and make your own uh, sort of recipe, your own mixture and try it out. And there you go. We're our own fucking alchemists. We're fucking really digging deep into some of the, um, the territory of chemical PE. And actually, it's not even that deep. Like, really, if you want to go in deep, you're going to use hormones. You're going to use uh, PGE-1 injections and so on. I would say this is like you're just, you know, kind of dipping your foot into chemical PE. Now, personally, I've never used hormones. I've never even used peptides besides PT-141. And so this was really my bread and butter, was combining this uh, this mixture with uh, traction and VD and heat to really maximize my gains. And it's like, and I could really, really uh, uh, tell the difference when I apply it. Just the penis is just so much more elastic. I can reach, uh, with traction, I can reach lengths that I just wouldn't be able to reach um, with, <clears throat> with just traction alone or just with traction and heat alone. Just keep that in mind as you do have to apply this just about every day. You can miss a couple of days here and there, but basically if you stop applying it, it'll basically, the tissue is going to go um, back to normal. So what you have to do is you want to break down the scar tissue, break down the collagen, um, stretch it so that it stays there. Do that for, you know, as long as you can. And then it's going to basically stay in that stretch state. So that'll be, you know, your, your new uh, erect length. And um, if you stop, um, it's perfectly fine. You just gotta, just keep in mind, it's, just, it's a helper, but you do have to do it consistently. It's not like something that's just going to just, you just do it once and it's just going to, you know, just do its thing once. No, you have to apply it consistently, um, combine it with uh, other PE exercises. And it'll, it's basically just something that's going to help your other PE exercises or your other, you know, traction and VD in the case of Peyronie's. So there you go. A lot of people have been asking me about this. Uh, it's super infamous. It's one of the most advanced things that you can use to uh, treat your Peyronie's. And so like something that's something that I really, really wanted to talk about in this channel. This ha this video has been a long time coming. I put a lot of effort into it. It takes, you know, it has taken me years of experience to basically get to this level. I didn't even start using this DMSO recipe until about a year into, uh, into my Peyronie's. Peyronie's uh, disease. And so I, I think it's great for both the acute phase and the chronic phase. So, you know, hopefully it's helpful. You know, I, I think it's, it's perfectly safe to try it out. If you do try it out, if you do think it's helpful, please, please, please leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If you, if you help perfect the recipe, please let me know. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me on Reddit. And keep an eye out for other uh, pharma breakdowns into a specific element. I'm going to keep uh, honing in on the recipe. So I'll probably have like a update video. Uh, so I keep perfecting the recipe. And if you like this video, please, please, please make sure you leave a like. You hit that subscribe button and check out these other videos which are relevant to you. And I'll see you next time. Peace.